Hey everybody, welcome to JDM World. Today we're going to be talking about how to connect a DIY subwoofer to pro amplification gear, right? So uh, most people understand how RCA cables and five-way binding posts work when you buy a, uh, a normal home audio amplifier that you want to connect up to some speakers, right? Um, uh, banana plug, speaker wire, that kind of stuff is pretty common. But when you make the jump to DIY, a lot of people prefer to use pro amplifiers, so uh, things like Behringer or other, uh, other brands, and they have different types of connectors. So today, I'm gonna to show you how you connect uh, RCAs to balanced inputs, and then also how you connect uh, the pro style uh, speak on power terminals. What you see here is pretty representative of what you'll have in uh, in a typical DIY, do-it-yourself home subwoofer environment. So I'm gonna go over these parts uh, pretty quickly here so you can get a good feel for what we're working with. This is a uh, um, iNuke NU6000. So this has no DSP built in, but it's uh, th rated at 3000 by two into uh, four ohms. Um, I think it's really around 2000 by two with some, some peaks. Um, but this is a, you know, this is a very common uh, amplifier that you'll see people use in a DIY environment. Uh, this is a, a mini DSP uh, 2x4 HD. Um, many, many people use this uh, to integrate the subs in their uh, do-it-yourself and then just general um, subwoofer environments as well. So we're going to talk through how you connect your, uh, your source equipment to this box for DSP control, then how this connects back over uh, to your amplifier, and then how your amplifier will then connect using Pro Audio Speak On connectors to uh, the back of your subwoofer enclosure. And this is a uh, this is an NL4 NPR uh, Speak On connector that you would mount in the back of a subwoofer enclosure. First, let's talk about how to appropriately cable the signal path from your AVR to your amplifier. So let's assume this is a LFE output from your AVR, right? You've got everything set up on that side, and this guy's got your base information. Well, you wanna run this into your mini DSP, and this is where you're gonna do all of your digital si signal processing. This is your EQ, right? Um, and if you look, there are two inputs and four outputs on the back of this box. Uh, there's also power here, so pretend that we have the brick plugged in and there's going to be power in this guy. Um, so if you're using one LFE output, which is totally fine from your, uh, uh, from your AVR, you can plug this into N1, and that will, have, that will provide your connectivity from your AVR, for, from your Marantz, your Denon, or whatever it might be, to your DSP. All right? From your DSP, you then need to output these four in whichever combination you prefer, depending on the number of subwoofers you have, to your amplification. And that's going to be this iNuke uh, 6000. So let's just pretend we're going to connect two subwoofers. So we'll take these two uh, RCA ends and plug into out one and out two. All right. And then we'll then use the balanced inputs and plug these in to the inputs here. All right, so one was red, and let's let's call that channel A. So you'll t spin this thing around till you find the arrow at the top, and then it just clicks in. Then channel B, which is number two, off. Spin it around till you find the arrow on top. Push it in, and it clicks. Um, to remove it, simply you just pull out. All right. So that's very straightforward on how to convert from RCA, starting with your AVR into your mini DSP, and then RCA from your mini DSP into the balanced inputs on your amplifier. Connecting power from your amplifier to your do-it-yourself subwoofer is also a very simple process. Um, I've elected to purchase a speaker wire that's pre-terminated. Um, uh, th this is what you might see on stage. Some people will buy the ends and then terminate these into the speaker wires themselves. Um, but for me, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, super heavy duty, um, and this is going to be run across the back wall, so I don't need any cool carbon fiber, super expensive uh, speaker wire look. Um, you know, I just want something that can hold up to, to kids running over it and that kind of stuff. So, um, what we're going to do is this: this is a twist and lock scenario, right? So you're going to line this up 
with the top of the opening, then you're going to twist and then you'll push forward to lock this in. To remove, you pull back, twist, and then remove. Um, this is the male end, this is female. So we will find the notch until it slides in, and it only goes in one way so you can't mess it up. Slide it in, rotate to, the, uh, to where the silver tab's on top, and then push in to lock. Similarly, um, you know, this is what the, uh, the back of your subwoofer box might look like. This is a very common uh, connector that people use, and you'll connect it in the exact same way. So you find the large, there's a, there's a small notch and a large, place it in, and when you, when you push it in, I don't know if you can see that it'll, it pushes the silver piece back a little bit already. So push it in, rotate, and then click and then seat it firmly forward and then you have a nice solid connection into your subwoofer. So that's, uh, that's basically it. Um, output on your amplifier, inter uh, insert, twist and lock, and same process here. Insert, twist, and lock. Thanks for watching as we learned how to connect a pro audio amplifier to a do-it-yourself home speaker. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video and find it useful, please like and subscribe and uh, continue to look out for new content from JDM World.